Hey folks, Rick here, uh, Lala Farm. Um, so we've been breeding goats for a couple of years, and one of the things that uh, you know, you know, it's a kind of a joke. If you want to know, if you want to know the opinion from an expert, ask ten of them, and then you'll get ten different opinions, and none of them will be particularly helpful. So, you know, what we've learned, one of the biggest areas that has kind of confused and perplexed us over the past couple of years of, of breeding goats uh, and livestock is uh, nutrition. Um, not just for our goats, but for our chickens uh, and, other, and other livestock as well. Mainly for the chickens and goats, in particular for the goats. Uh, each one has a particular nutritional need um, that is very unique. Uh, for our goats in particular, some folks will say, you know, no supplementation, forage only, you know, if they can't survive, then cull them. Others will say, no, you know, that's not enough, and they give, they want them big and fat for the sale barn. Uh, they want them big and fat so that they can uh, sell them as breeding stock, although you take that uh, feed away, then they shrink back down to nothing. Um, so... You know, what Lala and I thought is got, the truth has got to be somewhere in the middle. So we talked to our vet who is a uh, specialist in small ruminants. Um, and, you know, she's you know, basically said, you know, limit the grain. Uh, let them naturally forage as much as they can. Um, but really feed them a good, high-quality uh, hay. So it's really what we've done. Um, We've what today, what I'm going to do today is kind of show you around uh, this dough uh, pen that we have um, and explain a little bit about how they go about um, foraging out here, what we have, how we've done it. It's about uh, seven acres or so, six, seven acres. Um, but most of their dietary intake comes from forage even now during the winter months when there's a not a lot growing uh, we do uh, purchase a uh, really high quality uh, Timothy hay uh, directly from a um, from a um, hay uh, broker uh, so it comes directly from the field to the broker put onto a truck and delivered to our barn uh, we try not to buy any of that from uh, place such as tractor supply because we just don't know how old that is the older it gets the less nutrition it has in it the fresher it is the better it is so in terms of what we feed um, we feed um, primarily forage and we'll walk around and show you a little bit about that in a bit um, but other than that we're primarily feeding a little bit of grain uh, not much um, and it's really more for training purposes than anything else. Um, goats really, really like grain. Um, it's very satisfying to them, although um, it's really not necessarily good for them other than to put weight on, because a lot of it, particularly commercial uh, grain feeds, um, has, a lot of, has a lot of calories, um, some nutritional value, um, mainly they'll get some copper, maybe some selenium through those commercial feeds. We don't have that in our soil here, so we have to get something that will supplement that. So we do that through the little bit of feed that we do feed them. Uh, we have these H, uh, 200 HD feeders. Um, we have migrated away from putting uh, our feed in there uh, for them. We primarily use uh, alfalfa Timothy pellets or straight Timothy pellets or straight alfalfa pellets depending upon what we can get. Usually it's a, a mix of Timothy and alfalfa pellets. Um, they get uh, free feed, free choice on that as much as they want. Once a day, uh, in the morning generally, uh, we will measure out about a half a cup um, of grain that will be delivered to them uh, in a essentially a half of a PVC pipe that we put down that you can see they like those alfalfa pellets or those alfalfa timothy pellets um, the grain we just feed using this trough here and it gets it gets uh, just once a day um, once it's gone it's gone um, 
And that's really it. That's the nutritional uh, regimen for these girls. Once uh, they come up here to, they come up here to uh, the main barn. They'll eat from uh, from these feeders. Uh, outside of that, they get once a day that, and then the rest of it is all is all uh, forage um, that they will get through browsing uh, the pastures uh, each day. Um, and we're pretty happy with how how they're turning out. Uh, these are most of the does here coming up. I'm not Kimberly or Lala has a has a way of, of calling them that they're all pretty responsive to. So we got them from all different sizes. Our oldest one in the entire herd is the one that's the white one over uh, along the fence line. That is JFF Leia. Um, she is the matriarch of this herd um, and uh, really all these others give deference to her. This is uh, this is her enforcer, what I call um, what I call Cloud or JFF Cloud. Um, she's kind of the enforcer so anybody that gets too close to Leia, Cloud will kind of take care of. This is one of our new mamas. We just moved her over into this paddock today. Um, she gave birth about three weeks ago and uh, you know the unfortunately she's not keeping body weight on her so we've had to worm her um, and uh, hasn't been optimal in terms of uh, nursing um, some of the others such as uh, such as this one over here this is Pawnee girl ACK Pawnee been a phenomenal mother delivered unassisted um, delivered um, delivered a boy and a girl unassisted and has just been an incredible mother uh, so we're really really happy with her so we got uh, till about uh, third week of February then we've got nine does that are scheduled to deliver uh, then and uh, and that will be it for this breeding season and then it'll be I think we're gonna move everything up to July or back to July from October uh, which is what we did this year uh, I think we're going to probably make this uh, a July time frame or late July time frame. Um, that way we're having everything delivered uh, late December, early January. Um, all right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks. Bye.